Uh, Kali Akuno, uh, you're up from Jackson, from Jackson, mm -hmm. Mississippi. Uh, can you? You're deeply involved with issues of economic democracy. Um, talk about this tax bill. What does it mean? Well, I mean, it's one of the greatest transfers of wealth from the working class to the rich. I think in history, not just American history, but history. I think when you look at all the details that are coming out and all of these little backdoor uh, deals. Uh, these plausible denials by folks like uh, uh, Corker, um, they only go so far, but the, the details are there. You know, uh, this is going to help a, a narrow sliver of folks within the United States. And folks like, you know, myself and a lot of the folks in Mississippi, uh, we're going to be drastically hurt by this bill. Uh, you mentioned one of the, the, the kind of the fallouts, which is already happening around many, millions of people losing their health care. I'm likely going to be one of those people uh, as a result of this tax bill. Uh, when I filed for, you know, my application, it said that my rates were going up from $900 a month, which is already outrageous, to damn near two, uh, 2000 um, Excuse me for that, but just the emotion uh, of what I'm going to have to deal with. And given my income, uh, that largely makes it almost impossible for me. And I earn a little bit more than the average person in Mississippi. So you can just imagine that there's only one health care provider uh, now that's going to be within the, the affordable health care markets in Mississippi. And if that's the rate that they're charging uh, as a result of, you know, the pullbacks from, from Trump uh, with the subsidies that he already had announced, and you look at what this, this tax bill is basically going to do, we're going to be suffering uh, this next period immensely. Mm. Um, what about Roy Moore losing, Doug Jones winning, even with Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act being passed only by Democrats? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> President Obama said, we will wait for Scott Brown, who had been elected in Massachusetts, a Republican senator, to be seated before we go for this major vote, because the people of Massachusetts have spoken. Mm -hmm. But um, Mitch McConnell has clearly said that this vote will take place before Christmas, so that um, what, well, what that will lead to is Doug Jones, who was elected in the special election, will not be able to participate right. in this. Well, I, I think Doug was trying to aim uh, to ally some fears yesterday on his CNN interview. Uh, when he basically said that he was going to look to try to find some common interests, you know, with the Republicans. He was clearly aiming at a re-election bid, you know, uh, coming up in 2020. Uh, so it's, it's also another case. We're not quite sure, even if he's seated, honestly, right now, where <laughs> he would vote. I mean, he's clearly what we would call in the old school days a Dixiecrat. Um, and I think he self-described himself as a blue dog Democrat. So it's, it's not quite clear. We would hope that he would be one of the people who stands in opposition uh, to this tax bill, and we would hope that Coker would come to his senses and also oppose it. Uh, but that's a lot of hope, and I think, you know, that we're, we're kind of stretching thin. I think the real question is how are we going to organize in the long term to not only defeat this tax bill, but they're coming for Medicaid, they're coming for Medicare, they're coming from Social Security. Paul Ryan has already said that they're going to look at that next year. So we got a serious fight on our hands that we got to get prepared for. They will so disadvantage states and cities that they will then be forced to cut services. That's right. That's right. I mean, they're already looking at that. And then on, in our case in Mississippi, uh, we have a, a Tea Party uh, super legislative majority in our state legislature. They're already looking to add more cuts to what the federal government is also doing with this tax cut. So. For places like Jackson, it could be severe austerity the next couple of years. So that's something that, that we hope is not the case, but we're kind of gearing up, expecting that, you know, prepare for the worst. Hmm. Um, I'd like to ask you to stay after the show so we can to post to particularly looking at Jackson, Mississippi, and what you've done there, and how the Trump administration impacts that. But before we go, a very quick comment on your deep concerns about white supremacy in the United States right now under President Trump. <sighs> Um, it's not just here. Let me let me state that I was recently in Europe and I, I witnessed uh, uh, reports on uh, the fascist threats in Italy. And now there's a far right uh, member sitting in the Austrian government. Um, I have deep concerns about this playing out throughout the world, but particularly here, looking at Donald Trump, there's a there's white supremacy and then there's neoliberalism which is emerging, as I would argue, and I think many people would argue, with a serious fascism that could threaten uh, life on this planet as we know it. So it's not just a, a, a minor concern. I think it's a deep concern that all of us should have. 
I want to thank you for being with us. Kali Akuno is with Cooperation Jackson um, and has written the book Jackson Rising, The Struggle for Economic Democracy and Black Self-Determination in Jackson, Mississippi. And I also want to thank David Sirota, who broke the story in the International Business Times about Senator Corker and his surprise switch vote on the taxes, though who knows, he might switch back, um, being opposed to the tax bill. Uh, with the provision that was put in that would personally enrich him. We'll continue to follow that story. When we come back, what's next in the fight to preserve net neutrality, the principle of a free and open Internet? Stay with us.